Yes. Yep. There we go. Uh, I cannot hear anything. Did the video not work? I didn't hear anything. Okay. You know, that's uh, why we don't try new things. God. Anyway, um, welcome to the uh, Monday Takeaway, episode five. Yep. The, uh, the idea was to uh, lead in here with the uh, WKRP in Cincinnati theme song since uh, it's kind of our uh, biggest story of the day here um, with Cincinnati, but uh, we don't fully know how these things work yet. So anyway... Um, Robert O'Neill, Chris Novak, as always, I don't look disheveled anymore. Nope, and I'm still wearing hats over here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ugh. Yeah, see, tradition, we'll, we'll keep up with it. Um, anyway, yeah, let's jump right in, because <clears throat> we're actually, we're going to talk about Xavier first. Yep. Because, because they're 10 and 0. They are. And they are one of the five best teams in the country. They probably are. I wouldn't uh I wouldn't argue on that. I um yeah. Okay, so Xavier. Uh played Wright State, you know, did their thing, whatever. Yep. And then the crosstown shootout, they really they took it to Cincinnati. They really did. Uh that game was not remotely close from the jump. No, the Bearcats made a run in the second half to open the half, but um, they were still trailing by, you know, they were trailing by sixteen at the half. Yeah, cut it to within like nine. I think they got the closest they got was like six, but Xavier maintained control that entire way. And um, you know, if you've only watched Cincinnati against Butler and Xavier, you might not think that they're that good, but they are. They're a good team. Yeah. Uh, they returned most of their team from last year, which was good. They got Mick Cronin back. I mean, they're a good team. And they beat George Washington. Yeah. Um, so, I still, I'm not sure it's Xavier's biggest win of the year. I think that still might be at Michigan. Or the Dayton win. That yeah. They just but in terms, of, in terms of, like, symbolism, you know, you beat your rival to get to 10-0. Oh, yeah. And tie the best start in school history. I mean, yeah. Um, it's been it's been nuts because you know D. Davis and Matt Stainbrook meant a lot to Xavier. Yeah, and That's coming into the year, you know, you figured maybe they can kind of replace Stainbrook a little bit. You know, Jalen Reynolds could keep emerging, and um, you know, a couple of their other bigs. Seems far, but. Um, Edmund Sumner was a question mark coming into the year to replace D. Davis, and he's been great. Yeah, he's been he's been terrific. He's been exactly what they've asked of them. Uh, they were going to go with a true point guard if they if they got one, and it was probably going to be between him and Larry Austin Jr. Sumner won the job in the off season, and he has proven Chris Mack right every single time that he's been on the court. Yeah, I mean. This is great. This has been a great start. This isn't just a great start for the Big East. This is a great story in college basketball. Oh, definitely. Um, really, uh, and they're really they're great to watch. I mean, yeah, they're they're not really like a slow, boring team. No, they're they're pretty they're pretty exciting. They play great defense. Um, they're very balanced in what they bring to the table offensively. Yeah, uh, they have a lot of guys that can score in in a affect the game in a number of ways. And, I mean, they're they're good at everything. Yeah. They can rebound, they can score, and they'll beat you with, you know, nine or ten guys. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, a lot of it comes back to Chris Mack. Um, hopefully finally getting his due as a great coach. Yeah. Um, but this has been an awesome start. And... Um, you know, if you go by Ken Palm favorites, they should be 12-0 and going to Villanova on New Year's Eve. Honestly, I'm not sure that I don't take Xavier to beat them. 
I mean, <laughs> break their pavilion winning streak, which has been ridiculous. They've won like 35 or 36 in a row now, I think it is. So, yeah, I mean, if they get through Villanova, then they play Butler in Cincy. Um, and then who knows? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're not going to go undefeated. Let's just get no, that. Um, no, it's too, the league is too difficult right now, which we'll get to as well. Yeah. But I definitely don't think it's out of the question to say that Villanova could, I mean, rather Xavier, could go to the Pavilion on New Year's Eve and beat Villanova. Yeah, but again, getting back to your league is too difficult. The worst team in the league just uh, beat Syracuse down yesterday. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was probably the most surprising result of the entire week, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, um, Just real quick, John Rothstein had a couple thoughts on Xavier uh, earlier where he said they were the best team since 2008. Yeah, I can uh, I can rock with that thought process. Yeah, I mean, um, and really, you know, the new Big East teams, especially Xavier and Butler, which I really don't want to call it the new Big East anymore. I know we're not doing that, but, you know, they are arguably better for the conference than, you know, your Cincinnati's or your Southern Florida's. Well, I think there's no question that they're better than Southern Florida's of the world. Well, yeah, I mean, Southern Florida, I was looking for more of a mid-level, uh, I mean, it's it's arguable that they're better for the conference than Notre Dame basketball, um, even though Notre Dame basketball has been very good. Yeah. Um, it's arguable that they're better for the conference than, um, you know, just some of the other mid-level teams that left. Uh, you know, they're. I mean, I don't want to go as far as to say Syracuse, because obviously Syracuse is, you know, they are who they are. Recent struggle to side. Yep. But those are big additions. Oh, and yeah. Main point here. And, uh, you know, just keep rolling with it. Precisely. Um, let's see here. Power rankings. Power rankings, power rankings. The team I voted first place the last uh, two weeks is finally number one. Yep, that being Xavier. Yep. Of course. Um, Lenovo fell the two. It's not really their fault. I mean, you know, the interesting thing would have been to see an 8-0 uh, Villanova team with a win over Oklahoma against a 10-0 Xavier team in the power rankings. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, Butler jumps up a spot to three. Providence jumps up a spot to four. They had a weird week, which we yeah, will talk really about. Yeah, um, Georgetown won both of their games and fell two spots, which that'll happen. That's how good the conference is. Yeah, exactly. I I know I docked them down just because, I don't know, the rest of the conference just looked really good. Uh, Marquette's at six. Seton Hall's at seven. Those are two teams that um, are rolling right now. Eye on. Uh, if you're not watching Marquette, watch Marquette. Yeah, seriously. Henry Allenson is really good at everything. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, Creighton is eight. They did better this week than last week. They did. They went 2-0. and so. uh, St. John is still nine. DePaul still ten. DePaul ruined the uh, potential 10-0 and weekend for the Big East. But that's okay. Uh, Arkansas that's Little Rock is a good team. Oh, yeah. They're a very good team. I, you know, No disrespect to uh, them. Absolutely you know. not. They are a very stout defense they are very stout defensively. Yeah. So, um, all right. Those are power rankings. Uh, player of the week dropped early today. It did. It before, we, before we could even get the Big East Coast Bias Player of the Week up, but I believe they're the same. So they are right now. Um, assuming the voting doesn't change. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a spoiler warning there. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Um. Caleb Martin, Big East Player of the Week, not surprising. Um, not at all. He's really good this week. Um, and also Chris Dunn only played a half. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's anyone's award when Chris Dunn's not in the fold. Very nice of him to uh, step out of the spotlight so that someone else could get it this week. Uh, but, no, Caleb Martin was really freaking good. Yeah. Um, 
25 and 11 against Tennessee in that ridiculous game that we'll talk about. Yep. Later. And then uh, 20 and 8 against VMI. And, uh, you know, Caleb Martin, he's their sixth man right now, but I don't know how much longer they can keep him in that role. I mean, it might. I mean, I just don't know who you would replace in that lineup. But even as a six man, he just he can do pretty well for himself right now. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a James Harden thing right now, where they just want to keep him as a six man because you know you have him out there with your second unit or whatever. And uh, well, Butler doesn't really have a second unit per se, but you know, you bring in Martin, and you know maybe you don't have Roosevelt Jones or Kellen Dunham on the floor then, but you still have offense. Yep. Um. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Um, and then the freshman of the week is uh, Allenson. Henry, Henry Allenson. As if you should be surprised. Yeah, uh, first player to win more than one of them this year in terms of freshman. Yep. So, um. Yeah, it's the first repeat winner. So. Yeah. Four weeks, uh, four different winners, and Allenson took it home after good performances, especially so against uh, Wisconsin on Saturday. That was a fun game. That was a very fun game. We'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, he's got five double-doubles this year in ten games, um, averaging about 17-9 this year. Um, affects the game in so many ways. Great ball handler, as we saw. When he grabbed a rebound and went coast to coast. Yep. Went with the left hand. Yeah. He's really good. He's the second best freshman in the country. I don't care. And I don't even think that's a crazy thing to say because, um, you know, Skull hasn't been good. No, absolutely not. Um, Jamal Murray's been okay. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Um. Malik Newman has had a weird year. Yeah, he has. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think it's crazy calling him some the second best freshman in the country. No, definitely not. Yeah, so. um, All right, what is next here? Um, Shall we talk about the coaches' poll? If we have to. Is there anything crazy on it today? Uh, let's see here. So... Number one, unsurprisingly, is Michigan State. Number two, perhaps surprisingly, is Iowa State. Uh, three, oh. three is Oklahoma. Oh. Kentucky, five is Kansas. Duke, Maryland, Purdue, Virginia, and Xavier is number 10. Uh, as far as other Big East teams go, Villanova dropped to 13th. Providence is tied for 14th with Baylor. Okay. And Butler is 18th. Um, where is Arizona? Uh, Arizona is 12th. Still above Providence, huh? Yeah. Uh, I mean, with that, with that said. Yeah, no, I mean, Arizona had a, they, they did go into, uh, the kennel and win. Yeah. And they, they had a thorough beat down of Missouri. Not that that's really impressive. Oh, no, you know. Georgetown received six votes. Um, and I believe that they were the only other Big East team to receive any votes. They were. It's actually surprising. I mean, I know Marquette's got the two losses, but... Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that people didn't buy too much stock in Marquette. You, know, you go in the Cole Center and win, which, I mean, this year, that's not really a thing. No, and George, George Washington jumped up nine spots into number 22. They uh, will uh, face the poll next week. Yeah, so they're new to the poll. Um, I see Oregon. Out are, yeah, schools that dropped out were Oregon and Utah. Um, you know, I have a real problem with Iowa State being number two. Same. They, I understand that they came back and beat Iowa in a really ridiculous game at Hilton Coliseum, but they have not beaten anybody. No. Besides Iowa. That, no, Oklahoma, if you're going to take a Big 12 team, put Oklahoma at number two. Oklahoma, who pretty much demolished. Yeah, uh, beat the yeah. hell out of Villanova. Yeah, I mean, well, Villanova, Villanova didn't do themselves any favor. Well, of course not, but. We'll get to. Even even so, you have to give Oklahoma some credit. And if you're going to go with the, oh, they, they have an unblemished record thought, what the hell is Purdue doing at number, at number eight? 
Yeah. If, if anybody is I, – I would take Purdue over Iowa State right now. I don't think that's actually remotely close. No. And, I mean, before Iowa State beat Iowa by one with the comeback, what was their best win? Virginia Tech? Colorado? <laughs> Just so late. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, they, they haven't they haven't done anything. I mean, no, the, their best win before that was like was Colorado on a neutral floor, which is a good win. Sure, first game of the season. Yeah, exactly. And other than that, Chicago State, Chattanooga, Virginia Tech, Illinois, North Dakota State, Buffalo, and then Arkansas Pine Bluff after the win against Iowa. Yeah, and yeah. meanwhile, Purdue. Who hasn't really done much better, but they've beaten NCANT, Vermont, Incarnate Word, Old Dominion, Florida on a neutral floor, Lehigh, Pittsburgh on the road in in Pittsburgh, obviously, New yeah. Mexico at home, top 50 win, and then IUPUI, Howard, and Youngstown State. Yeah, well, I mean. I think beating Pittsburgh on the road is a lot more impressive than anything Iowa State's done all season. Why is Purdue's schedule so weak? Is it because they were down for a couple of years? So they, uh... Yeah. Yeah, because before, before this year, before before last year, really, they Purdue really was not doing anything at oh, all. No. Yeah. But they do a big game coming up this week, which we will talk about. Yes, and that's going to be a very fun one in, the, in Indianapolis. Um, let's see here. Um, heard, Rob, heard Rob Stone earlier this weekend say that Butler was going to Purdue incorrect. Inaccurate. No, I mean, technically, Purdue's going to Butler. Yeah, exactly. It's actually surprising that that's neutral instead of uh, semi-home. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they're giving that they're well, calling it neutral. I guess you figure because the fans will all, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that's, yeah, what, an hour from Indy? You know. Yeah, West Lafayette's not that far. So. Which, again, actually really cool that the four Indiana schools do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I really wish the four Ohio big schools would do it, but it's kind of it's kind of surprising considering every other Indiana in every other Indiana school involved in that besides Butler's kind of highbrow. Yeah, I mean, I mean Purdue. Notre is in basketball. What Notre Dame's not in basketball. They're still Notre Dame. Okay, they're still Notre Dame, and it's still Indiana. Yeah. So, credit given where credit is due for those programs for doing the right thing. But it also helps the fact that Indiana basketball in general, in terms of the entire state, is so ridiculously large that they can be able to pull off that stuff. Oh, so well, yeah. They still get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, sh- shout out to those athletic programs. Um, it would still be cool once the um – if they don't renew it after next year, if uh, maybe Butler and Indiana would do a home and home. Oh yeah. Just because you know the arenas. Yeah, exactly. I mean, going uh, to Assembly Hall and Hinkle Fieldhouse is yeah, it's pretty exceptional. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and just one more thing on the coaches poll. You mentioned the uh, two Pac-12 teams dropping off. Uh, you know, I don't have time to watch much other basketball. Um. But I did catch a few Pac-12 games on Saturday. Uh, Utah, Oregon, uh, Oregon State, Kansas, which actually was a good game for a while. Yeah. The Pac-12 might not be as good as we thought it was. I think the Pac-12... <sighs> I mean, Cal's not very good. No, Cal, Cal de- Cal's definitely a work in progress. Um, Cal's getting better. Um, but, you know, the thing was, oh, someone's going to compete with Arizona this year. I don't think they are. Maybe UCLA. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised UCLA didn't get that many. Fo- well, they got 59, so they were just just outside the top 25. They'll probably be in next week. And, I mean, Oregon's injured, so whatever. Oregon's, yeah, Oregon's a little banged up. I don't really – I'm not going to really discredit them for um, the loss at Boise State. Uh, Boise State's a very good team. Yeah. Um, they're seven and four, but their losses have come have they lost to Arizona twice. Yeah. And they lost to Michigan State. And their other loss was to Montana, kind of inexplicably, but yeah. aside from that, I mean really? You'd like those are two high high quality, high caliber teams. I'm not slighting them in the least bit. I'm I'm sure Oregon 
rather Boise State was probably favored in that game anyway. So yeah, um, but you know, Pac-12 according to Ken Palm is the fifth best conference right now, and that's about right. That that sounds about right. Yeah, uh, Given the uh, third. Yep, Big Ten's fourth. I'm yep. surprised that the, the the Big Ten is kind of in a. I, it's basically Michigan State and Purdue and everybody else right now. Yeah, Maryland hasn't really Maryland, been Maryland. impressive yet. Hmm? Um, Maryland hasn't really been impressive yet. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of waiting on oh, – and Iowa, too. I forgot about Iowa. Um, Michigan yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Mich- Michigan's kind of getting up there, but um, – Wisconsin, can't really trust anymore. No, I, Wisconsin's in a – in more trouble than they've been in years. Northwestern hasn't played anyone. No, they have not. Um, and then Illinois, Nebraska, Minnesota, Penn State, and Rutgers, and Ohio State are all terrible. This is the worst Ohio State team I've seen in oh, well over a decade. The, I, they, it has not been this bad since like 2002, 2003. When the, well, actually, no, 2003, 2004 when they went 14 and 16. Yeah, and I mean, it's not going to get much better for them next no, year. I mean, really not. Um, I know Ohio's top recruit was Amari Spellman, who's been committed to Villanova for like a year and a half now. Yeah. Um, and Ohio State was in on him, but... And Ohio State plays Kentucky next Saturday. Yeah, speaking of Ohio <laughs> State, you know who's probably not too pleased with how Xavier's doing right now? Because they're going to continue to get killed in recruiting? Bad Mata? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that's uh, there there's there's some problems going on in Columbus right now with that with that team, and it can can we just also slightly bring up the fact that their arena sucks? I mean, yeah, uh, Bayou City Arena is trash. Well, we were in Columbus, and you know, we went and walked around uh, the Horseshoe, and it was awesome. Beautiful, beautiful venue, and. I mean, was Value City Arena, like, across the street? I didn't, like, seek it out. I mean... It, it's just oh, it's such a bad venue. I, you know... I, I don't think there's a bigger drop-off from football stadium to basketball arena than Ohio State has. Hmm. That's good. Maybe, maybe Tennessee? I mean... I've never been in uh, Thompson Bowling or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. It's called, right? I, I know you went to Neyland. Ne- Neyland's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and from the outside, uh, Michigan Stadium and the Chrysler Center both look nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Ohio State's up there. Yeah, current maybe uh, Rose Bowl, the Pauley Pavilion in its current state, even though Pauley Pavilion got renov- renovated. We were in the Pauley Pavilion all the time. There was a flood. You know, I know it got renovated before the flood, but the flood didn't help. No one goes to Pauley, though. And everyone got mad about that. Anything in Los Angeles. I know. I'm just joking because everyone makes such a big fuss about it. But it's like, it's L.A. What the hell do you expect? Yeah, I mean. Come on. There's a lot to do out there. Yeah. I, I mean, even so, it's like there's going to be a ton of traffic all the time. Yeah. Like, no kidding. It's never going to really be full. Uh, by the way, you could tell it was kind of a light week last week and it's a light week coming up that we're off the rails already. Yep. Um, just while we're out here, one more thing before we get back on track. Uh, see, Serena Williams was the uh, SI Sports Person of the Year. Um, I agree. Yeah, you know, a lot of people wanted American Pharaoh, which would have been fine. I would have been fine with that too, even if it is a horse. Okay. Horseman of the Year. We have not seen a Triple Crown winner since what thirty, forty years ago. Yeah. What the hell um, and. American Pharaoh went and, went and won the, uh, what the hell is it, that event that was in New Jersey? Yeah, he won the one at Monmouth. Yeah, help, help me out here. What was that called? Uh, I don't know. It was a pretty Basketball? big deal. Yeah. And he won the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. So, you know, you win five events like that, that's unprecedented. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it would have been proper. It would have been proper. And then, um... I have no, I have no qualms with Serena winning though. That's fine. No, Jordan, I had no qualms with Farrell winning either. Yeah, Jordan Spieth was up there. Um, I think an interesting thing would have been if Ronda Rousey defeated Holly Holm. 
I think if Rousey defeated Holly Holm, uh, she would have she would have won. Um, but no, there was no real clear winner this year. I mean, I mean there there were there was a lot of dominant athletes this year. It's just yeah. but that that's what'll happen. But you know, people are mad just to be mad. Um, what are people mad. Well, what are people so mad about? Well, you got uh, horse racing Twitter angry that American Pharaoh didn't win. Uh, I'm sure you got a subset of people mad because it's Sports Man of the Year. No, oh, of course. Somewhere. Yeah. Um, sure that's God. Um. Ugh. You want to talk about bracketology? Human though it's probably outdated by now. Um. Let's see. Apparently, because Xavier was a three, and they're probably a two now. Let's see. Bill and yeah. does St. Joe's basketball, which I didn't know until a few weeks ago. Well, that's because he lives uh, in Philly. Yeah. He is yeah, neighbor no. with the uh, former Big East Coast Bias member, Brian Nestle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Bracketology, the new Bracketology is probably going to come out next week because it came out on December 8th. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we can look at uh, – well, well, let's see. Let's see. Well, Providence was a five, and Xavier was a three. Yeah. Region, I don't know if that's going to actually happen, but – No. Um, loud, unless – I mean – I know Xavier would have to do a lot, but I think given a Big East conference schedule against the Iowa State's Big 12 conference schedule, Xavier could be the two in St. Louis. I could see it. I could see it. And I would like that because I could go to that. Yeah. I could definitely I can definitely see uh see Xavier getting a two. Maybe even things shake out while they could even get a one. Who knows? Yeah, I mean they're not getting the two in Oklahoma City. No. They're not getting the two in Raleigh. No, let's let's get those let's get those out of the way. They're not probably probably not going to. Uh, I wouldn't give them the two in Brooklyn. I mean, St. Louis no. from uh, Cincinnati is like three hours. Yeah, it it would make no sense to give them the two in Brooklyn. That would be that would actually be kind of unfair for them. Yeah, there and there's just way there's way too many good teams in the Mid Atlantic and the Northeast to shy away from a Maryland or a Villanova or any one of the like to get a, get a two in that region. So, yeah, as this was uh, last week, um, Xavier was a three, Providence was a five, Georgetown was the eight in Des Moines. Um, and Butler would be a fun game. Butler was a five in Denver. Villanova was a three in Brooklyn. So, that'll change. There will be changes. Yeah, there will be some changes. I think Marquette will probably get a little bit more consideration this week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's so hard to go off this because, you know, a lot has changed. Oh, yeah, and there's going to be so much that changes throughout this entire year. Um. All right, let's jump in. Okay, finally. <laughs> um, Monday. There are two games, three games. Yes. One uh, being big. Yes. Um... Well, let's start there. Villanova and Oklahoma. Um, Villanova played a really bad first half, and then they turned it around. And then the last like, minute of the half, they turned it around again and went into the half down by six, which was promising. You know, they played their worst half of the year, and they weren't uh, down by too much. And then the second half came, and they played their worst half of the year again. Yep. Um, so... You know, the big story, they were four for 32 from beyond the arc. Um, that kind of that spawned a whole bunch of, oh, Villanova shoots too many threes. Yep, but, you know, um, they're going to eventually shoot their way out of it. They did yesterday against the Sal. Yep. And as Ken Palm so point, point, poignantly put it, Villanova sucks at three-point shooting, but that's probably not going to continue. Well, yeah. But, and, I mean, you know, Oklahoma, they were really good from three. So, yep. I mean, Buddy Heal couldn't miss for a while there. Isaiah Cousins didn't miss from three. Um, it was just kind of a beatdown. And yeah. I didn't expect it to be a beatdown. No, I didn't either. Um, but... You know, Oklahoma showcased why they're 
probably probably a Final Four caliber team. And Villanova, I don't think there's any reason to panic, but they fell into some matchup issues as they are prone to doing. And yeah. it's just what the end result was. Meanwhile, the AP poll just dropped. It did. Xavier is in the top 10. They're number 10. Uh, the top five is Michigan State, Kansas, Oklahoma, who jumps up from seven to three, Kentucky, who jumps up from five to four, Iowa State, who goes from four to five, then Maryland, Duke, Virginia, Purdue, and Xavier round out the top 10. Villanova's number 12, They and Providence is 14th, one behind Arizona, and Butler is number 17. And that about wraps it up for the Big East. Yep. UCLA yep. Is, has jumped into the top 25 from 31 to 22. Uh, Texas A&M jumped from 28 to 24. UConn jumped from 26 to 25. George Washington jumped up from 29 to 20, 21. And Cincinnati didn't move. Correct. Which kind of shows uh, how Xavier is right now. Exactly. So they, they didn't really they didn't really dock them. I'm actually kind of surprised the Carolina dropped from three to eleven. I know Texas is it, but that's a that's a bit of a yes. decline for them. I feel like we're getting disrespected, but that's just me. Um all right. So also Monday you had Butler uh, against VMI. Uh, nothing really to point out here. Keelan Martin had his first good game of the week. Yep. Um, Butler didn't have their slow start like they usually have. Um, and they scored a bunch of points. They did. They did. So, you know, it's kind of what they've been doing. Yeah, I mean, not much else to really say about them. They've been very good offensively. Um, a little skittish defensively. A little weary of that. Yeah. Um, if they play a good defensive team in the NCAA tournament, they may be able to be halted a little bit. And if they can't get stops, they might end up in a little bit of trouble. But the season's still young, and they still have room for improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we had um, Georgetown and Brown. Yeah, uh, Hoyas doing what they have to do. They won a game against an inferior opponent. Yeah. Uh, um, and did so... Convincingly. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, Georgetown led, uh, what was it, 45 to 15 at the half? Yes, I be- or 46 to 15, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, they were pretty convincing. Yeah. Um. Bradley Hayes had another double double. He's been pretty good. Mm-hmm. He has. Uh, Marcus Derrickson's emergence continues. Yes. Um, he had himself a good day on Saturday as well, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yep. Uh, Tuesday. Do we have anything Tuesday? Um Let's see. That's a good question. We did. Xavier played Wright State. We talked about it earlier. Uh yep. Trayvon blew it. Had 22 points. Um, it, it, I believe Xavier, that was their 25 nothing run game. Yes. Which is your biggest run in the Big East this year. It is. It is. Uh, Trayvon Blue, it's been really good. You wrote about him earlier this week. I did. Um, he's been very good defensively. He kind of – he had a bit of a sluggish game against Cincinnati, but that's okay. Hopefully I didn't join a carry him. Um, <laughs> see how the rest of the season plays out, but I don't want to be jinxing him. I didn't really jinx Desi Rodriguez. No. Maybe I'm five hitting five hundred here, but we'll see. Um so I mean, you know, it's it's to the point where we really just shouldn't talk about Xavier home non conference games anymore. Pretty much. Pretty much. They won. Um Marquette. Marquette had a fantastic first ten minutes against San Jose State where they shot the lights out. Yeah. They really did. And uh Helen, uh yeah, Sandy Cohen had his career high was twelve, and he uh, eclipsed that with about twelve fifty to go in the first half because he made his <laughs> five threes. Yep. Um, and then yeah, Marquette led uh, thirty-one to seven at one point, and then at the half it was only a nine-point game. Um, it got to six in the second half, and then they kind of pulled away. And it was it was ugly. Yeah, it was. It was pretty ugly. But you know, I mean, as ugly as a double-digit win can be. 
Yep. Um, Ellen said 20 and 8 in that game. Luke Fisher had 11 and 13, and Sandy Cohen had 24. Uh, Wednesday, we definitely did not have games, did we? I don't know. I think we did. Um. Yeah, there was. Yes, Wednesday was a busy day. Well, it was. in the scheme of last week. Yes. St. John's Niagara, you watched that game. Ugh, I wish I didn't. <gasps> that game was horrendous. Yeah, that, should, is, the, yeah. that is the ugliest win of any Big East team thus far this season. That was awful. You should have known from the start when they started at 5 Eastern. No, I know. It was so silly. <sighs> that back team was... Ugh, that was hard to watch. Um, no one really stood okay. out too much in that game. Uh, I, they really didn't. I mean, it was 48-44. to 44. Yeah, it was 48-44. to 44. I mean, with the new rules, that's almost impossible. Yeah, seriously, that that's like mid, that's like mid two thousands Big Ten level. <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah, I can't really even blame. Like, I can't really say, "Oh, it was good defense." No, it was just really bad play. Uh, yeah. Federico Musini and Christian Jones had eleven and ten. Mm, that you know, and that was pretty much it. No one had more than six points from St. John's. Uh, Matt Scott of Niagara had 14 points, Emil Blackman had 16, and no one else for Niagara had more than seven. So uh, St. John scored 0.7 points per possession. Niagara scored 0.64. Uh, both teams only made three three-pointers. Those That came on a combined uh, – 18 plus 17 is 35, so they went 6 for 35 from the three-point line. Yeah. Yeah. They sure did. Ugh. Anyways. Um, anyways, Providence-Boston College was interesting. It really was, because going because, through it. Yeah, going uh, into it, uh, we didn't know how many players Boston College was going to have, because they did them all. Um. Yeah, they ended up having all their players, and Providence ended up getting sick. Yeah, uh, Chris Dunn got under the weather, fell under the weather. Uh, Ryan Fazekas didn't play. His mono. His mono. Uh, Isn't ideal. No, it's not. Uh, and Ben Mental rolled his ankle in this game. Yeah, so, but Providence, uh, all credit to them, were able to still put together a win. That yeah, game got ugly in the second half, but. Uh, you know, Providence was able to get a nice first half lead before Bentel got hurt. Um, Bentel left with 16 points in 16 minutes, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, because he would have just kept it rolling. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, it was an ugly game. Um. And you know, the question is: This what Providence would have looked like if Chris Dunn went to the NBA last year? I say, yeah. Eesh. Which isn't good, but... No, I mean, at least next year now, you'll have Bentel with another year of experience. Uh, you know, you'll have Ryan Fizikis continue to emerge. So, I mean, you know, they'll, they'll be okay next year. Yep. Um, what else happened Wednesday? Uh, yes. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Nebraska and Creighton. Oh, yeah. Uh, Creighton kind of beat down Nebraska. Seriously, this game wasn't close. No, it was not. It was a six-point game at the half, but Creighton just took it to him. Yeah. It wasn't like a couple of years ago when Creighton was winning like 38-8. to eight. But it was still impressive. They still won by nearly 20 points. And Creighton needed that. Oh, they absolutely did. Uh, Jeffrey Grosell rolled his ankle, but he, uh, he came back relatively quickly. Um, so that's good to see. Yes. Um, what else happened in this game? Uh, Isaiah Zier Den played Zim's very well. Zierden was good. Um, well, Watson was good. Yeah, he was good for Zierden after putting up a goose egg previous week. Yeah. Nebraska's not a very good team. No, they're not. Nebraska had the one year where they were okay. And uh, as we predicted, uh, Creighton fans kind of let CBS Sports have it. 
Yeah. And so did Creighton's basketball account to their credit, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, if you do read the write up, um, it was like a split vote. Yeah, but <laughs> it was still really funny. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Oh, man. Um, that was a good game. It was a big win for Creighton. Yes. You know, you got to win your rivalry games. Greg McDermott is um, 5-1 and one against Nebraska now. I believe it's 5-1, and one, yeah. I mean, something like 12-0 and 0 against 10 miles. So, you know. And then uh, DePaul and Drake actually played a good game. And yeah, they did. We were able to drop a lot of great jokes. We were. We were. As we, as we aimed to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they kind of ran out of steam, but then we finished strong with the, uh, if you're reading this to Paul one, so. Um, Billy Garrett looked good, 19 points. Tommy Hamilton, 13 and 9. Um, actually, Eli Kane has really come on strong in the past couple weeks. He really has, um, and his development has been a big reason why DePaul's been pretty successful. It's actually surprising that uh, you know St. John's or Seton Hall didn't snatch him up. Yeah, uh, shout out to DePaul for pulling in someone from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, Reed Timmer might be the uh, new best, you know, mid-major player. Uh, if you don't count the Gonzaga guys, he might be the new Seth Tuttle. Yeah, uh, Timmer has been quite good. Yeah, he had 30 against DePaul, um, and he is averaging 19 a game this year, so he's been good. Um, yeah, and the only unfortunate thing for him is that Drake is 4-6. and six. Yeah, that's not great. But it's not, it's not to his discredit. I mean, he's got... He's been in double figures in every single game so far this season. Yeah. The point total he had was only 10. Yeah, exactly. So, um, on Thursday, Seton Hall played. I don't want to, you know, I'm a big Seton Hall guy. I've given them a lot of credit this year. They played two really boring games this week. Oh, Jesus. Yes, they have. <laughs> um, oh, my God. I, and, I, and I talked about how St. John's Niagara was bad. Both these games dropped. Both of Seton Hall's games this week drained the life out of me. Uh, you know, and Thursday they beat Troy. All five uh, starters got into double figures. Whitehead had 20. Uh, Desi Rodriguez and Angel Delgado both had strong nights rebounding. Desi Rodriguez also uh, has taken a step back this year, so that was nice to see him uh, kind of flourish in that game. Yeah, Rodriguez, who had the top play on SportsCenter and Fox and Fox Sports Live, too. So Yeah, yeah. Um, Pretty emphatic dunk. Again, I really, you know, I don't want to talk about seasonal non-conference games anymore because we know what matters. We do. We do. But with that said, they have a big non-conference game looming this Saturday. Well, the entire conference has a big non-conference game pretty much on Saturday. And be- for whatever reason, that game against uh, – against Wichita State is happening at the ripe hour of noon Eastern. Well, oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was 1130. That must just be when coverage starts at Fox. That's what Fox was saying to me this week, and I was like, what? That Mom. doesn't make sense. Well, um. But, what, now that makes, but now that makes sense, so. Oh, so it's not at noon? No, it is at noon. I thought it was at 1130. Well, because well, the Devils were there Saturday night. Well, yeah, no, but it's, it would it would still have been weird for that game to start at eleven forty. Well, yeah, like I, I would get it to start at like eleven, but eleven thirty, yeah. really? But uh, no, they do have a big non-conference game looming this week, so that'll be yeah, interesting. Uh, Friday we had nothing. Friday we had nothing going on. No. And then Saturday was the first of two really fun Saturdays. Yes, we have around here. Um, not going to talk about Cincinnati and Xavier yet. Well, we kind of did already. We kind of we kind of glossed over that already. We don't need to go deeper into that. I mean, we yeah. an available point. Brian against Providence. Uh, Chris Dunn still had his uh stomach bug. He did. Um, so he did not play. He was also still on the bench. And then I believe it was um, Jalen Lindsay left the bench for a while with a stomach bug too. So Chris Dunn maybe shouldn't have been around. That was weird. Um, it was very weird. <laughs> um, 
Providence won again, um, and hopefully they're all in the Seinfeld protective bubbles now. Yes. Uh, for the week. Yes. Um, ben Mitchell played in this game. He didn't start, but he played. He did. He had so. 16 points off the bench in uh, 25 minutes. And shout out to Drew Edwards. Yeah, Drew Edwards, uh, career high, 17. So five, five for nine from the three-point line. The freshman getting some burn, making the most of it. Can't ask for much more. Um, you assume Chris Dunn will be good to go Saturday. Yes. Uh, you Not, assume Ben uh, Mental will be good to go Saturday. Uh, Physikus is interesting because mono takes a while. It does. And it kind of stabs you of all your energy. Yeah. So hopefully Physikus, uh, his health improves before they play the Bronx, a rider. Yes. Yeah. Bronx, not Broncos, Bronx. Um, also, Rodney Bullock had 14 rebounds in this game. Yeah, Bull- Bullock, uh, Bullock had himself a pretty good week. Um, all things, all things considered, he did well against BC. Yeah, he did well against Bryant. So, also, didn't we determine that this is Providence's best start under Ed Cooley? Uh, I believe that in the last game it was their best start since Keno Davis was their coach. Cool. And then so, they, they started like ten and one, and then they went like four and sixteen for the rest of the year, or something, right? Yeah, uh, that was in uh, the final. That was in one of the final years of the uh, the Keno Davis era. era. Well, it's, yeah, they started. They started eleven and two. Yep. Going into Big East play, they won four more games the rest of the way. They actually started eleven and two in Cooley's first year, also, and then then the bottom kind of dropped out. But that's because they didn't really have much to work with. Yeah. Uh, sophomore team bats, but other than that, uh, they didn't really have that much to work with. Yeah, I'm looking for ten and one starts. Uh, you know, Ken Palm goes back to 2001, 2002, and uh, there's not one since then. So they've done a lot. They've had a lot of ten and two starts. Yep, a lot of and some ten and threes as well last year. Yep, but ten and one is kind of elusive for them. So. I would imagine probably uh, the Rick Barnes or Pete Gillen era. Yeah, that, I'm. I'm actually curious to see this now. Um, well, Rick Barnes took him to what an elite eight or something. So I think so. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, let's see. It's probably in the game notes. Probably. Um. I'm check them. Um. Let's see. Providence is best. Also, Mike probably knows. Yeah, he probably does. Um. All right. Let's see. Let's check the game notes here from uh, leading into the other day. Um. Okay. Game notes versus Bryant. Last meeting. That's not what we want. All right, let's see here. Friars ranked. This is the highest they've been ranked uh, since they were ranked 12th in 2004. So that's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking here. I'm not seeing a lot in terms of uh, fast starts for them. Um, I'm seeing a lot of starts where they where they have two losses. I'm looking up sp- looking at Sports Reference right now. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh this is our best start in a while. Okay. So in 1988-1989, uh, the Friars started one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and 0. So this is their best start since 88 89. Yeah. When they went 13 and 0 through the through their first 13 games, their first loss came against Villanova at the dunk. Okay. So there you have it. Yep, there's your answer. Um all right. Let's... Hopefully their their fate is not the same that year. They lost to Syracuse in the in their first game of the conference tournament and then they lost their first NCAA tournament game to Virginia. Yeah, no, that wouldn't be good. 
I don't think they'll be playing Virginia in their first uh, game of the tournament, though. So no, I don't. I don't think so either. But uh, you know, you just have to hope that they don't. That, that was the God. I don't even. I can't even reckon. I can't even name any of these uh, these Virginia players. Like their names are just very unfamiliar. I wonder who's on that Syracuse team. We are off track. We are so off oh. track right now. It's a light week. You know, it's, very light. it's a very like, oh, that was Derek Coleman was still there. So, so, it was a good Q's team, I'm assuming. Okay. Um, yeah, that Q's team went 30 and 8. So, yeah, they were pretty good. They lost in the Elite 8 to Illinois. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Providence won. It's their best start. The Kendall, the Kendall Gill and Nick Anderson era. There it is. <laughs> Flying Illini. Yes, sir. Um, okay. Anyways, yeah. Um, Providence, they took care of business. Um, for their sake, Chris Dunn heals up. Yep. Ryan Fizikas, uh They have exams this week, so, you know, it's a pretty light week for them. Best of luck to them. Yeah. Most teams have exams this week, actually. Yeah, so. Vill- Villanova started yesterday, which is weird. Or actually, I should say Saturday, which, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. Very strange. Um, Georgetown, UNC, Wilmington, where UNC Wilmington showed why they were undefeated. Yeah, uh, Georgetown kind of handled their business at first, and it looked like they were going to win by double digits. And then the Seahawks made kind of a big run towards the end. They got to within three, but. Uh, they were unsuccessful in stealing a win in the phone booth, uh, mostly due to free throw shooting by Georgetown. I uh, got to make your free throws, kids, and Georgetown did. Well, also, um, you know, they cut it to three again with like ten seconds left, and then they took about five seconds to foul. Yeah, that that was really weird. Uh, UNC Wil- Wilmington chose not to foul instantaneously, uh, which kind of bit them in the behind. Yeah, they they also fouled DSR when they were up three uh, with like seventeen seconds left, and you want to foul you know anyone except him, and they pretty much fouled him as soon as he got the ball. Yeah, not not wise. Uh, but yeah, free throw shooting was a huge difference in this game. Georgetown shooting eighty point six percent, making twenty nine of thirty six attempts. Uh, UNC Wilmington had thirty nine attempts, so they typically got to the line more than Georgetown, but they were only able to cash in on twenty seven of them for sixty nine point two percent. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do we want to go to Marquette, Wisconsin right now, or? We might as well. Okay. Well, that was fun. Yeah. Um, um as, as we expected it to be, really, uh, really the whole week leading up to it, doing the, uh, living in enemy territory stuff was cool. Uh, yeah. shout out to everyone who participated in that. Big thank you to, to you for doing that, some good content there. Uh, yeah, as far as the game goes, that was very fun. Uh, yeah, probably yeah. the biggest win for Wojo as head coach of Marquette. Oh, I don't think it's close, really. I mean, no, absolutely not. Um, yeah, as we said, Henry Ellenson had a double double. He was a large presence the entire game. Yes, uh, Nigel Hayes wasn't very good. No, uh, very su- surprisingly so. Uh, Hayes was Hayes had a day to forget. That was four for eighteen. Started the game over for eight. Um, Marquette was actually up to a pretty decent lead in the second half before Wisconsin went on a run. Yeah, they were up. Uh, they were up fourteen with eleven thirty three to go in the second half. And then Wisconsin tied it. Yes. But um, actually, the biggest play of the game ended up being a rebound. Uh, yeah, Luke Fisher grabbed the uh, offensive rebound. Luke Fisher, who continues to excel, um, he, that was a big get for them last last uh, last winter. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could uh, you could probably make a pretty decent team with just guys that have transferred from Indiana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree with that notion. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, big win for Marquette. Pretty much a must win after they oh, lost to Iowa. No question. Um, and now the the good thing for Marquette. There's no, they have no reason not to be ten and two going into their Big East opener against Seton Hall on December thirtieth. No, and that's that's at home. That's winnable. Yeah. 
So, so in theory, in theory, they could be eleven and two with and a ten game win streak. Yeah, and winners of ten in a row going into their game against Georgetown. Yeah. So and eleven of twelve. So there are not many teams that are doing better right now than Marquette. And I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, they were where they were in the power rankings. I think I, I don't I don't want to say that they're better than the teams that are ranked right now, but I think that some preconceived notions maybe are kind of interfering with how people are viewing them right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you know, you just keep taking care of business, and uh, it'll come. Yeah, because I think that that was the best w- that that along with Xavier's win over Cincinnati was the best win of the week. Yeah, uh, you know, I am hoping to get up to Milwaukee in the next uh, few weeks and check out Marquette. Same. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. Yes. Um. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. Um. Let's see. We got Butler in Tennessee. That was a strange game. It was a very strange game. It was a very, uh, very strange game. You don't get many 94-86 finals. Uh, no, but, but you know that's that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of score and that's the kind of game that the new rules want to establish. So. Yeah, and I mean the new rules have really benefited Butler almost more than any other team because. Kidding me? They were probably, they've been you know kind of fast paced so. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, we saw it the first game of the year when they dropped 144. Yeah. And, I mean, that's not to say that, you know, Butler's a, a high-flying team. They're 91st in adjusted tempo this year, but that's still pretty high. Yeah, I mean, they go down, they get their shots, and they uh, take them, you know. And yeah. Having, having Kellen Dunham kind of helps that because oh, you know, he'll just pull up. Yep. Um, Gil Martin. 25 points, 11 rebounds, both career highs. That's why he was Biggie's Player of the Week. Yep. Um, that was only in 20 minutes as well. So. Yeah, seriously. You know. he, he's doing quite well for himself. Yeah. Um, Free throw shooting looked to be a pretty big difference in this one too. Uh, I see that Butler only missed four of 30 attempts. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean – uh, Roosevelt Jones came close to a triple double again. Yeah, I, I see that as well. Twenty one, uh, seven, and ten. Um, I didn't get to follow this game too much because uh, Mark you know, Johnson was going on. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you know, we we have someone at the Butler game, so yes, exactly. No, um, but they're a fun team to watch. Yes, they're a very fun team to watch. And, you know, if you're watching a game, they'll probably show Blue, who is the best and a friend of the site and a personal friend. Yes. 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 Did you see the uh, lighting at the Children's Museum today? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I did, because he's the best. Yes, he is. Okay. Any, anyways, um, what else? Creighton. Creighton. Again. Yes. They, uh, they didn't. You know, look terrible against honorary Big East member IUPUI. Yeah, they kind of uh, they kind of mauled them, uh, ninety to sixty-five to be precise. Um, Isaiah Zierden, another big game. Yes, seventeen, uh, five for seven from the free, from the three-point line. Uh, didn't take a single two-point attempt, so all of his points pretty much came from there and the free throw line. I wonder, did he make the honor roll? <clears throat> Let's see, I don't usually check the honor roll. Yeah, I don't either. Um, I'd be surprised if he didn't. Mo Watson had a good game too. He did. He did. Eight, ten assists. Um, two steals. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, it was really just kind of a beatdown for Creighton. I mean, yeah, Toby Hagner and Zach Hansen all got into double figures. Uh, Malik Albert had eight. Their uh, three-point percentage was only one percent lower than their free throw percentage, which um. Call it what you want. Yeah. You know. Um, Zerden did make the honor roll, so, hmm. you know. Uh, can you actually, can you guess the honor roll? The other four guys except for Isaiah Zerden. Um, I'm not going to give you the teams because, well, I, 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 okay. Butler, Georgetown, St. John, Xavier. Roosevelt Jones. Yep. Uh, Miles Davis. Yep. 
And you said Georgetown's there? Georgetown, St. John's. Georgetown, St. Well, St. John's is probably Federico Mussini. Yep. Georgetown, it's one of two people. I'm going to go with DSR. Yep. Okay. I thought it was either him or Marcus Derrickson, but okay. Yeah, if I didn't give you the teams, we would have been here forever. So, yeah. so you know. Um, actually, speaking of this sort of thing, though, if we're going to do, you know, who's your all Big East team going into conference play, I might have like 10 guys because <laughs> – I, uh, it's tough. It's a very it's tough. talented league. It's tough. We don't, even, we don't even have a player of the year favorite right now. I, I guess it's still Chris Dunn, but, you know, his numbers kind of take a hit since he missed two games. Yeah, I, I mean, you know. Um, we still talking about Saturday? We are. Saturday was busy. What happened on Saturday, you know? Uh, DePaul lost to Arkansas Little Rock. Uh. I'm not going to say DePaul looked good. They didn't. No, they but, didn't. However. But Arkansas Little Rock is a very good team. They're 8 no. They were higher than DePaul and Ken Palm coming into this game. They were probably favored. Um, it was a 9 o'clock start. Now, I'm not making excuses because, you know, DePaul, it's a game that they could win, you know. Um, you want to get more out of – pretty much everyone on your team except for Mike Henry and Eli Kane. Correct. You don't want Billy Garrett getting two points. You know. But, you know, I saw some guy the other night, oh, you know, that was the worst performance I've seen in the 35 years I've been watching DePaul basketball. No, it's not. No. No, it's not. You said that to Rick Carter, too, which is just... Rick Carter, one of the nicest guys around. Who yeah. responded to the guy, and he's like, oh, well, you know, I appreciate you being a fan, you know, like your input. <laughs> um, <sighs> you know, don't, don't tweet at coaches, don't tweet at players, don't tweet. Yeah. Never tweet. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, it's, it's disrespectful to Arkansas Little Rock to really is. that DePaul should have blown them out, and it's disrespectful to this DePaul team called the worst effort you've ever seen when... Come on. They won, like, five Big East games in five years. Yeah. Seriously. Paul lost 27 straight conference games. I, you know, oh, you know. Don't it's, pick on them. Yeah, seriously. Come on. You know, we pick on DePaul, but... Yeah, of, course, of course, but we don't go that far. No. No, because it wasn't, you know, you got to look at other things. Yeah. Or Arkansas Little Rock is a top, I believe they're top 50 in defense in the country. Um, yeah, they're 34th in adjusted defensive efficiency. Um, let's see where they are in terms of defensive rating. Uh, let's see. Arkansas Little Rock, the Trojans defensive rating. Oh, I picked on Augusta State. Um, hold on two seconds. I mean, just because you don't know a team doesn't mean they're bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you no. Know, that's a really bad opinion to have. Quite. And the Sun Belt's not a bad conference. No, it's really not. Um, all right. I got it, uh, I got it queued up finally. <laughs> um, their defensive rating, 82.9. That is number four in the country. Yeah, so, you know. They have the best scoring defense in the country. They have allowed only 53.2 points per game. And, I mean, you know, they didn't really play anyone before. No, but, yeah, they beat Tulsa. Tulsa's a good win. Yeah, but still. San Diego State's a good win. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you know. That's garbage. Easy does it. Easy does it. Yeah, you know. That's what I have to say. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, we had games yesterday, too. This week went on forever. That's what happens when the games aren't evenly distributed. Pretty much. All right, let's start with St. John's destroying Syracuse. That game was never close. No. Um, Surprisingly at that. You know, maybe this is just what Chris Mullen in the garden is going to be. <laughs> that – I like, I halfway expected maybe St. John's could scare them a little bit. Maybe they'd hold a lead for the – Water part of the second half before, you know, Syracuse's experience kind of took over, but man alive. Syracuse is in some trouble. They, they, 
I don't think that this is necessarily a death knell for Mike Hopkins or whatever there, but this is uh, this is going to be a little bit of a bad spell for them right now. And I mean, I said it, but it's not fair to judge Mike Hopkins off these nine games. I mean, wait till he's the you know actual coach. Yeah, because there's something to be said about you know, oh, he's just the assistant coach right now, and he got. Swooped into being the head coach now, so it's kind I of. I say, uh, you know, I do think they probably could have done better than Mike Hopkins. I mean, I'm sure they promised him the job if he stuck around, but that's a big job. And while you know, while we say that, you still lost by to a bad St. John's team by double digits. Not good. No, and St. John's actually they had about ten recruits at this game. Yeah, you think uh you think that think that looked good? <laughs> think they like what they saw? Seriously. I mean <laughs> Sheesh. Speaking of St. John's recruits, uh, Raleigh Elkins had fifty one yesterday. He did. I saw that. He's good. Yes he is. Uh but yeah, no, St. John's hosted a couple kids from Roselle Catholic. Um they probably liked what they saw big time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, Bashir Ahmed wasn't there. He's going to be visiting them this weekend. Yeah. No, he was at Texas, which. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, you know, <laughs> he was he was going to win regardless there. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, big win for St. John's. Big win for Chris Mullen. Oh yeah. Um. You know, I don't think this St. John's team is going to be a pushover in conference play. Oh, hell no, especially if they get, if, especially if they get Lavette back, and once they get Ellison back, I'm they are probably my most intriguing team going into conference play. Yeah, between them and Marquette, because I want to see how Marquette does, given how they're probably going to be going in within ten with a ten game win streak. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty much. And um, I, I saw someone, dis- I saw a few people discussing this. You know, we have our perception of St. John's right now. What if they wind up beating South Carolina on a neutral floor on December 22nd? Then what? Uh, yeah, I mean, you go to that? Shoot. You may have to maybe think NIT. Yeah. yeah. Because we said that I, the realistic situation for them was to get like nine wins or nine to 13 wins, double digits would be best case scenario. Well, they're already at seven. They're probably going to beat Incarnate Word. They're probably going to beat NJIT. Yeah. I mean, so, they don't have a bad loss this year. We said that last week. No, they don't. And we, everyone all, everyone all panicked and whatnot when they lost to Akinas or whatever the hell it was in uh, the preseason. Yep. But their losses are to Vandy, Indi- Indiana, and f- at Fordham. Fordham, okay. You know, you, know, you never really want to lose by double digits to – Anyone. It was their first road game, though. It was their first true road game. They kind of got taken to the woodshed. Yeah. But still not an awful loss. No. Now, the Niag- if they lost to Niagara, sure. Yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been very bad. Niagara's ranked 318th in Kempom right now. But I I don't know. I, I think that if they wind up do either playing S- South Carolina close or if they wind up winning that game, we may have to start rethinking our perception on their, on them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, before the game, on the pregame show, Steve Levin actually said that Syracuse should be on upset alert. Yeah, shout and, out to him for calling the upset. Yeah, you know, when we're talking about Steve Levin, you know, just shout out to him in general. Um, he could be really resentful for how things went down. You know, yeah. he kind of got scapegoated a little bit. But, you know, from everything he says, you know, he's honored that he got to coach there. Um, you know, he enjoyed his time there. Yeah, he got he gets put in a tough spot a lot doing Big East games and whatnot and talking about St. John's. He handles it very, very well. And I've enjoyed watching him more than Ben Holland, and Ben Holland wasn't bad, but Steve Lavin was great on TV between UCLA and St. John's too. Yeah, so yeah. So I mean I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um also yesterday we had two other kind of boring games. No, really did. Um, I mean Vill- Villanova LaSalle, it was it was good because, you know, Villanova got back to being Villanova. I, I mean, it, it, yeah, exactly. At least it was somewhat exciting because Villanova was shooting the lights out. Yeah. Well, St. Peter's was another. Yeah, St. Peter's, uh, they didn't score many points. No. 
Um, they at one point only had like twenty three. Yeah, and that was like knee deep into the second half. So yeah, um, you know, Seton Hall. Honestly, no one on Seton Hall really impressed that much either. I mean, Angel Delgado had another double double, but but you know. And, you know, I'm not saying, oh, every game someone needs to score 30 points or I'm going to be bored, but you're going to have games where they're just boring. Yeah. And that's not that's not me disrespecting Seton Hall. They've been a very good team. Um, they have definitely turned the page. They're, I'm impressed with the fact that even though they did play Rutgers and they played Bradley after losses, that they've been able to successfully knock out wins after losing games. They struggled with that last year. They're showing some results. Um, they're not just beating teams that they're that are inferior to them when they face them. They're beating them rather convincingly as well. Oh yeah. And they haven't really had many close calls. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head was the Georgia game. Yep. Um. So, I they they've just they've been very they've been very impressive. Uh, one area of weakness, the two areas of weakness that they're showing right now are pretty much what we expected. Uh, turnover percentage, they can't really hold on to the ball well. Nope. And free throw percentage. Yep. So they're, they are pretty much exactly who we thought they were. Yep. And when they face Wichita on Saturday, I'm kind of intrigued to see how they play against a top-tier opponent that's playing better now with Fred Van Vliet back. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and Villanova, as, as we said, uh, they sh- got back into the mix – they Five guys at double figures, really good guard play. Daniel Trefu had a good rebounding game. Yep. Uh, yeah. Stout. Um, and like we said, they, they shot 13 of 28 from the three-point line, 13 for 27 technically, if you don't want to count in Ochefu heave at the buzzer at yep. the, in the first half. So um, that pushes them over the 46% threshold, which kind of plays into the they're not going to be awful from the three-point line all season. Nope. Factory is a forty-eight percent. So. All right, we're finally on to previewing games. Oh uh, well, we did miss a couple things from last week, like uh, Ben Zobris picking the Cubs over the Mets, because why wouldn't you? Oh yeah, and Jason Hayward going to the Cubs over the Cardinals, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, you know, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. today yeah. off day, kind of a theme of the week. Yes. Tomorrow, Monmouth plays Georgetown. That should be a good game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of scared for Georgetown a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah, it'll be a nice break from finals. Uh, also, if you are in the area of Georgetown and you go and uh, – we retweeted it earlier, but if you retweet the tweet, they'll give you a free ticket for yep. tomorrow. It's social media night, um, which you assume they have a few empty seats because of finals. Yes. Um, but it'll be a good game. I mean, if you're in the yeah. area, you get a free ticket. Go check it out. Oh, absolutely. Monmouth, Monmouth, was, good, the they, Monmouth was better before they lost to, um, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, you know. And then DePaul plays Stanford tomorrow night. DePaul beat Stanford in Rosemont last year, and this is a much worse Stanford team, so DePaul's probably going to lose. <laughs> no. Well, good. For their sake, uh, it's a good trip out to the farm. Yeah, um... I mean, DePaul could win. Stanford is nowhere near what they were last year, like I said. Um, and DePaul did win on the road earlier this week, so. Yes. Um, and, you know, DePaul might be looking to uh, avenge their loss from the other day, so. Yeah. And uh, they've, well, I shouldn't say they've actually done well against, well against, and well after loss this year. They had a three-game losing streak earlier in the season, but. They did roll off four in a row, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. Those are your games for tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday, off day. Thursday, off day. Friday, one game. That would be St. John's Incarnate Word. What a game. No. Great birthday birthday present for yours truly. Yeah, look at that. My last hangout as a 23-year-old. So, fun stuff. That's nice. Fun stuff. Saturday, uh, loaded, 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 loaded day. Saturday's busy. I'm going to miss probably everything before Butler-Purdue, which 
is annoying. Yeah, um, I don't blame you for feeling annoyed about that. Uh, Auburn Xavier. Xavier is at home. You know how we feel about that. Also, Auburn yeah. hasn't really done anything special. So Not quite, no. I would assume Xavier keeps rolling. 11-0 would be the best start in school history. Yep. Uh, Wichita Seton Hall. Interesting. Yes. I'm very intrigued to see this because, one, I think Wichita is very good. Two, I want to see how Seton Hall plays against Wichita State. Wichita looked great against Utah. They did. They beat them down. Yep. Woo. Yep, so uh, that will be interesting, especially since Wichita's almost got a full deck now. They got the uh, kid who got stretchered out in Orlando is not back yet, but uh, Fred Van Vliet's there. You know, Ron Baker. Uh, Marcus McDuffie, a name to watch. He shot the lights out against Utah. Yep. Um, and then our first main event, we got co-main events on uh, Saturday. Yes. Your first main event would be uh, Villanova, Virginia. At the John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville. I will end up calling it the James Earl Jones Arena at one point. Of course. It's just, you know. Um, good game. One of the most uh, in- hyped games of the year. Um, yeah, I, I'm intrigued on this for two things. I want to see how Villanova does against Virginia's defense. Yeah. I want to see if Virginia can keep up with Villanova's offense. Because aside from Brogdon, uh, the Cavaliers don't exactly have a second scoring option yet. No. They're still in search of one. So I want to see what happens maybe if Villanova is able to sh- shoot lights out and build up a big lead and see what happens because if Villanova big builds up a big lead, I personally think with how the, with how Vir- Virginia plays, it could be a bad spell for them. Villanova could knock them off. Yeah, yeah. I'm not predicting. I'm not predicting that Villanova wins. I'm not sure right now on my prediction about that, but I definitely think that while Virginia is a high caliber offense, their adjusted offensive efficiency is technically higher than Villanova's, yep. their tempo and their possession length is significantly less. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're pretty evenly matched. You know, they're both top 20 offenses. They're both top five defenses. Yep. Um, so it'll be interesting. Um, do you think that it's cause for alarm if Villanova, you know, loses by double digits like they did against Oklahoma? Okay, if they lose by double digits and it's not close and, Vill- and Virginia kind of does what Virginia sometimes does and just beats them down and wears them out, yes. I think that is cause for concern. Okay, that's fair. I think if it's a close, well-played game and Vill- Virginia edges them out, you know, shout-out to Villanova for playing them close in a road game. Yeah. Villanova... Their worst case scenario is that they get absolutely destroyed. Yeah, they yep. can. I don't think that they can really afford that. No, I, I I know there's something to be said about oh they're probably gonna be good in conference play again, but for as much as we hate talking about it, perception is a big thing. And if, also, you know, conference play is not gonna be a cakewalk. I mean, no, it's not, not not this year, not this, not without the Big East is playing. Yeah, not so. at all. Um, let's see, we've got UNC Asheville against Georgetown. Um, Georgetown should win. Georgetown will either blow them out or let them hang around, as they've done against non-conference teams. Okay, can, can, I, can I just make a one little random gripe here? There are three really good games going on at noon Eastern this Saturday. Utah Duke, Villanova, Virginia, and Seton Hall, Wichita State, all on at the same dang time. Yeah, you know, give the remote a workout. Who is in charge of that? <gasps> Ugh. Yeah. Awful. That's uh, horrendous. Wait, all the produce on Big Ten Network? Why? For what? Yeah, well, because it's a Big Ten game, and uh, yeah. Purdue is technically the host. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. CBS is doing the uh, Ohio State-Kentucky games. And yeah. And the game's going on in Brooklyn. That's right. Yeah. No. Um, Creighton, Oklahoma. Uh, oh, oh, that's gonna be 
It was a good game last year. It was a very good game last year. Very unexpected result happened. I don't think it's going to happen again. No. Um, and that's that's not a slight to Creighton. I mean, they're better than last year, but so is Oklahoma. Yeah, exactly. And you're going to Norman. That's yeah. oof, uneasy. Nope. Um, Northwestern to Paul. That's that's a that's kind of a big game. Yeah, yeah. That'll um, be a nice little game for Chicago. Yeah. Not that they'll care, but no. Um, we'll have someone there though, so it'll be fun. We will. And then your other main event of the day, Butler Purdue, where we will also have someone there. Yes. Um, can't wait for that game. Can't no, that'll wait. be fun. That will be fun. Um, I mostly can't wait for it because I want to see what happens when Butler plays one of the best defensive teams in the country. Yeah, I want to see what happens when Purdue plays someone. That that also is true. Um, that also is true. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, the Crossroads Classic games always end up being a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, you had Butler beating Indiana a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you had Butler Indiana last year was a lot of fun. Yes. So you know. And then uh, we talked about it earlier Ryder Providence. We'll see if Providence has their guys back. I think even if. Somehow they don't have Chris Dunn back. Uh, just Ben Bentel should be enough to beat Ryder. Ryder's not good. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's Saturday. Saturday's a big day. Saturday's a big day nationally. Um, oh, yeah. It's a big day for New York hoops, too, because you've got um, all the things going on at Barclays with UNC playing UCLA and Kentucky playing Ohio State, Utah Duke at the Garden, um, Cornell Syracuse, if you're into that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is going on in New York that day? Uh, I believe that might be it, though. But it's a it's a, still a very very big day. Maine's playing Fordham. Um, Saint, Sarah, South Carolina State's playing Saint Bonaventure. That's not that big, but yeah, big big day for New York hoops. Big day. Yep, yep. And then Sunday. Uh, and and it's not happening in New York, but Iona is playing Rhode Island in Kingston. That yep. is going to be fun. That will be a good game. That would be a very good game. Um, Sunday, Andrea T and St. John's, your lone Big East game. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that'll be – St. John's should likely have a chance to get to 9-3 and three going into that South Carolina game we mentioned. Which would be so big for the program. Yep. They are right now. Everything that happens pretty much is gravy this year since it's transition. Uh, it's stealing words from Zach Brazil there, but it's true. So, and then uh, Christmas week is pretty light, but we'll be back next week for that. Um, I think we have a couple questions that we really shouldn't wait until right now to get to, but we're doing it. Yep. The questions. Um, does Nova fall behind Xavier or Providence in AP poll this week? I would have said yes before it came out, and I will still say yes. At least for Xavier. I didn't think they were going to fall behind Providence. No, I didn't think they were going to fall behind Providence. Maybe if, if Villanova lost to LaSalle, they yeah. might have dropped out of the poll. Yeah. Or at least gotten to the top 20. Yeah. But... Uh, from Alex Sindelar, why is DePaul? That is a good question. DePaul, yeah. again, uh, you know, they ruined our 10-0 and weekend. Um, not their fault. Nope. You know, it is what it is. Absolutely not. Um, let's see here. Ah, yes. The best place to eat in Milwaukee. You know? You had a discussion about this on the account yesterday. What? You had a nice little discussion about this on the account yesterday. I did, because, you know, I lived in between Chicago and Wisconsin my entire life. And the only time I've been to Milwaukee is to visit my family or to go to Brewers games. Yes. So I've never really gotten a chance to, uh, you know, explore Milwaukee. I've explored Madison more than Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, so I've never I, – I, the only place I've ever, like, eaten in Milwaukee is um, Miller Park, uh, which is bad. i got to get up there, you know, and we are – Trying to get up there for um, a Marquette game. Yeah, that is in the works. Um, 
So if we do, I'll probably have an answer then. Um, I think if I had to give an answer right now, it would probably be uh, cops. You know, that's what everyone talks about, frozen custard, burgers. I've heard good things about Comet Cafe. Comet Cafe, I believe, is that the one with the uh, – is that the one with all the bacon? Um, Comic Cafe. Because I did see it on uh, Triple D one time. I believe it was Comic Cafe, maybe. They give you like a basket of bacon with your uh, meal. They might. I know they have, they have a uh, they have a they have this thing called the Comet Benedict, which is a biscuit, smoked ham, hash browns, cheddar, fried egg, and sausage gravy. Yeah, that sounds delicious. <laughs> They have uh, they also have country fried steak there as well. Um, they have a st- called the stemmy, which has corned beef, scrambled eggs, hash browns, cheese tortilla, and sriracha sauce. Which, oh my God, yeah, ugh. Oh, the and the country fried steak, by the way, is breaded with cornmeal. So, yeah. Oh wow. Sheila Keyless, or however you pronounce it. I probably yeah. bought that. Crispy torn, corn tortilla chips, scrambled eggs, chorizo, ranchero, tequila, salsa verde, queso fresco, and hash brown. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, one of those places. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are the questions, and that'll uh, do it. Yep. Um. So we'll have some more content coming your way. We'll probably have the polls posted in a little bit. Yeah. Um, keep your eye out this week. We'll be po- hoping to do things with a few other sites along the SB Nation network for the big games that are happening this Saturday, uh, namely Hammer and Rails. I yep. That's what it is, right? Yep. Streaking the Lawn, uh, maybe Crimson and Cream Machine for the Oklahoma uh, Creighton game. Yes. Um, as well as uh, – what, are the, what were the what was the other one that you were discussing? Um, I know we had one other big one. We wanted to reach out to Big Major Madness. Yeah, that's right for Wichita State Seton Hall. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Anyways, uh, that'll about do it. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you did, um, continue on reading the site. We had a the biggest uh, day of the. Season so far this past Saturday, so thanks to all you readers who decided to join us. Yep. Um, and for Rob, I'm Chris, and we'll see you next week when I am no longer a 23-year-old. Yes. See ya.